be headed for Brisbane. Players' nights on AFL 360. We head to various parts of the country for this brownie in a very modern way. Christian Petrarca's in Joondalup in quarantine. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. And Adam Trelaw's still in Launceston. Ads, welcome. Thank you. Good to be on again. How are you marking your early hours in quarantine, Christian? What are you busying yourself with? Uh, we've got the extra week off, which is good. So uh, probably a little bit more PlayStation. I'm currently designing a, uh, a 2K bracket. So uh, <laughs> a few boys on the PlayStation this week. So um, other than that, uh, the weather's pretty good. So a um, bit of swimming and, uh, yeah, just a bit of relaxing. Very nice. And Adam, are you? is it Friday that you'll likely travel to Brisbane? Um, I think so. I think they're still trying to figure out what the go is there. But um, obviously we're playing on the Saturday night in Brisbane. So... Um, yeah, I think rumours are we're travelling on the Friday. All right, so our issues first is, like everyone in the footy world, Adam, were you curious to see how the Toby Green case would land this morning? Yeah, obviously, um, it was the, you know, the talking point of the last couple of days. Um, you know, obviously, probably the next question you're going to ask me, whether it was fair or harsh, I think. Um, Through you know, the I think as uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that as 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 players we, we kind of understand that um, anything involving umpires and um, any contact, um, you know, whether it's intentional or unintentional, it's going to be looked at. So, um, you know, two things I do know: I know you know Toby Green, the the person, and, and how proud and passionate he is as a, as a human being and as a footy player. And um, I know he's going to be hurting that he's not going to be able to go out there and play. And I know his teammates are going to be hurting because. You know, he probably is arguably one of the best players in the competition. And, um, you know, he was my favourite team at the Giants and um, one of the guys you want in, in your team. So, um, you know, we know he's going to be missed. But obviously, like I spoke about just then, we know that um, anything involving umpires and, um, you know, whether there's contact or not, it's obviously always going to get looked at. So, um, yeah, there's, there's obviously, I think it's a little bit to play out still, but um, it's been a, a learning week, I think, for a lot of the players. Christian, oh, I heard you yesterday float the idea of a fine so we would play in finals. I couldn't work out whether you were being diplomatic or, or serious. Uh, I just think Toby Green's such a special player. Um, you know, in the finals, finals, he's uh, you know you want your best players playing. But I understand the AFL had the crackdown, um, as Trill, as Adam said. Um, you know, I think for umpires, it's such a hard game to adjudicate, and you know they make decisions. You know, every second and, um, you know, human error sometimes gets in the way and, and, and players do get frustrated. So, um, you know, whether Toby Green, you know, hit him in, intentionally or unintentionally, I think, um, you know, the AFL's decision, um, I guess, is probably um, fair. Ads, we all love Toby Green, mate. Um, but can you give us an insight? You played with him, you know him. Why can he not control himself in these situations when he gets hot under the collar? We know he's passionate. We love his attack on the football. But why can't he just manage to tone that back? No, I think, as I said, Brownie, um, he's such a... And as you just mentioned as well, he's such a passionate person, um, not just as a, as a footballer, but in everyday life. And, um, you know, he's a competitive beast. Um, you know, one of, if not the most competitive player I've ever come across. And, um, yeah, it's just been something that he's always kind of dealt with. And, and like I mentioned before at the start, he, he was... and. Um, I cherish every moment I got to play with him. He was my favourite teammate at the Giants. And, um, you know, if he's anyone... If, if there's a player out there you want to pick and put into your, into your team, and I'm sorry about this track, but um, I'd choose uh, I'd choose Toby Green because he's so, he's so freaking good and um, he's dynamic and he's a game changer. So it's it's a hard question to answer, Brownie. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, I know he plays on the edge and I think his teammates absolutely love it. Obviously, there's a couple of times where he's... Um, you know, been sighted and missed important games. But, um, you know, no doubt he's hurting at the moment. And, um, yeah, I, I love just seeing him playing on edge. And the way he plays, um, I've heard his teammates come out and speak about not wanting him to change a thing. So um, when he, you know, gets the opportunity to play again, which is probably obviously going to be next year, no doubt he's going to be that same player and um, that enjoyable player that we all love watching. Christian, the very fact that you're in Perth was a pretty good sign as to the announcement that was coming today around the grand final. I, I did wonder, just before we talk about the excitement of it being in that city with a full house, the dream, especially for a Melbourne player, would be the grand final at the MCG. Is there just a small part of you that felt a pang of sadness once it was confirmed that it couldn't be at the G? 
Um, yeah, definitely. I think not just uh, Melbourne players, but um, all AFL. I think the MCG has been the pinnacle of grand finals um, since the AFL started, to be honest. So there's no better place than the MCG to be playing grand final. Um, but for us, you know, the best thing that we've probably done all season um, in, in a COVID world is just embrace what's coming. And um, at the moment, you know, we're in Perth and um, we're being here for two weeks and um, wherever we play um, and against whoever we play, we you know we're ready to show up and, you um, yeah, I mean, a little bit of sadness, especially probably for our fans, um, you know, who can't get to the Perth and our families as well, who can't come to Perth. Uh, but, you know, even on Adelaide, the Adelaide game on the weekend, we had such a great fan base, um, you know, with us. What might the grand final be like? You'll play a prelim as well. You've been there once before in front of 59,608, which we won't talk about how it eventuated, but how can you recall the feel of the place that day? Yeah, it was absolutely rocking. Uh, and not in a good way for us, to be honest. Um, we got absolutely <laughs> smashed in the first quarter. Um, so my, my grandma's one of 11, eight of them live over in Perth, so I'm going to try and get every West Coast fan of uh, my family to be a Melbourne supporter <laughs> that day. So uh, we'll see how we go. And Ads, you played the elimination final there last year, so it was reduced capacity, 33,000, but that was a hell of a night in its own right. Yeah, as, as Track said there, it's... Um... You know, when it's when it's uh, at full capacity, it's rocking, and um, it's uh, it's one of the one of my favourite stadiums to play on. And um, the crowd feels so close as well when when it's uh, packed out. And um, yeah, I uh, kind of kind of kind of seen this coming, um, having spent obviously the last three to four weeks in Melbourne. You kind of uh, knew that it was going to get to this, um, but like Track said, this is the COVID world that we're living in, and. Um, for us to go that whole way, we're going to have to travel um, each week. So, um, yeah, we're embracing every opportunity that comes up for us. And, um, yes, it'll be really exciting to get there. But, obviously, we've got to take a uh, look after each week that comes for us. Ads, all the best on Saturday night against my boys. Not too much good luck, though, mate. <laughs> take it easy on them. But uh, the narrative around the Bulldogs the last few weeks is the midfield struggling. They've lost form. We know you were out for a long time, as well as Josh Dunkley. But you felt like the Doggies got their game back, especially in their second half. There was semblance of what we saw earlier on in the year, especially with Liberatore back into form. Dunkley tagged Parrish in the second half. You look like your running form was back. Is that how it feels internally? Yeah, well, I think you're right, Brownie. You're spot on. Um, you know, what uh, what we pride ourselves on as a midfield group is um, is obviously being the engine room and um, really setting the game up from the get go. And um, we've been down on on quite a bit of form in the last three weeks um, leading into the final series. And um, it's fair to say that uh, the midfield, um, you know, the midfield battles that we had in those three games, we've been, you know, beaten and. We showed some good signs, but we just wouldn't be able to sustain it. So for us to sustain it on the weekend and um, come up against a really good opposition and a really good midfield group in, in Essendon that, you know, boasts the likes of Merritt and Parrish and Shiel and Stringer going through there. And um, it was nice to uh, find that cohesion again and um, really complement each other the way that we do really well. Um, we did that at the start of the year really well when um, we were playing some really good footy. And, and like you said, Brownie, um, the way that we can complement each other and, um, you know, complement the inside grunt um, beast players like Liber and, and Jackson McRae and, and even Bonsi who can go inside, outside dunks to try and help, you know, myself, Baz, um, come into the game and, um, you know, really uh, create scoring opportunities was something that we focused on going in. But I think on the flip side as well, defensively we've been um, pretty poor the last three weeks as well. So... For us to keep Essendon to, um, you know, no goals in the second half, who, you know, coming into the final series with one of the red hot teams, it was a really pleasing performance. So, um, you know, we're we're going to be, you know, trying to lift that intensity coming into the game this week against, uh, you know, another quality opposition in Brisbane, and um, it starts with us in the middle. So we're going to be looking forward to that challenge against another really good opposition and another really good midfield group. Go easy, mate. Don't build too much confidence. Uh, track your own form's been fantastic. Not only in NBA 2K, but on the field as well. I want to know, though, a little-known thing you talk about. When you watch it as analysts, Jared, we see it and we get to go to the ground, 
the running power of Melbourne is what impressed me this year. And, you know, the players like, uh, you know, Harms gets up to the ground, Neil Bullen, Sparrow. Uh, but Ho Oliver and Petrarca have bobbed up a lot as well. They're running the length of the field. So if we're setting up a time trial, maybe uh, 3K is probably not your distance, mate, but I'm going to say over 1,000 metres, we can get Jared to call the race. Where are you finishing in that time trial? Well, firstly, it depends if I'm running forward or running backwards. Uh, <laughs> You're going, going forward, mate, attack. the best way. You're going <laughs> and forward. I'll probably, win, I'll probably win it then. Uh, no, the, the, the beauty about the position I get to play in, um, Clayton, is that there's so many guys around us that just sort of allow us to go and play. And um, similar to what Adam said, you know, um, guys like Sparrow and, and James Harms and James Jordan, um, Alex Nibble and guys like that who... Um, do the behind the scenes stuff that, and don't get the credit um, for what they deserve. Um, you know, they just allow guys, like my, as I said, myself and Clayton to just go and play and, and hunt the ball and, um, and go forward and kick goals. All right, so we'll get to chat again as this final series unfolds, Christian. So we wish you all the best. And Ads, you've got a, a big one coming up straight away. Before we conclude, is just cast your eyes over there, Brownie, the Callaways. So this is the biggest giveaway that we've ever had on 360. There have been more than 2,000 entries. You won't be the slightest You're just bit rubbing surprised it in. You realise we're in lockdown here, Jared. Well, they're Can't a museum piece at the moment. So more, more than $6,000 worth on the Callaway clubs. foxsports.com.au slash win slash Callaway. In 25 words or less the most important player at your team and why and the winner will be announced next Tuesday night on the show so get them in, get yourself in contention or I'm going to just put them in the back of the car and take them away because <laughs> one day we might be allowed to play lads, um, yes great to have you with us during the finals, good luck for what comes next Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Christian Petrarca and Adam Trelaw with us